configured a router before you're a new user, you may or may not be familiar with VPN. There are multiple types of VPN, so we want to take a moment to explain the different types and how they compare. First, VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and it is a means of connecting devices to each other remotely. Since the connections over the VPN are private, they are generally secure, but some VPN types provide more security than others. When it comes to VPN connections there are two types the Peplink hardware supports. One is considered a client-to-site connection and one is considered a site-to-site connection. Client-to-site means you are connecting a personal device such as your cell phone, tablet or laptop to a router at a remote location. Our personal device is the client and the site or server as it's sometimes referred is our Peplink router. That being said, in the case of a site-to-site -site VPN connection, this is a connection between two or more routers. Client-to-site VPN connections include L2TP with IPsec, PPTP, and OpenVPN. As an example, let's say we're at the local coffee shop, connected to their free Wi-Fi with our laptop. If we want to do some online banking securely, we can connect to the Peplink router at our home using any of these VPN connections. However, it's important to note that this is only possible if the internet connection at your home has a publicly routable IP address, such as a static IP. This means it can be accessed from an outside connection, provided it has the correct information and credentials to do so. Once we're connected to the VPN, any information that we send and receive through our laptop is going to be encapsulated and transmitted securely from the coffee shop Wi-Fi through the open internet and back to our PepWave at home. This protects us from any potential threats on the coffee shop Wi-Fi network, and it also lets us access local devices on our PepWave, such as security cameras or a hard drive, all as if we were connected directly to our home network. While we take a quick look at the PepLink configuration pages, we want to make sure this is clear. Our laptop, in this case, still requires an internet connection. It cannot use the internet connection from your PepWave at home. It's simply a means to secure your connection over a public network while simultaneously providing remote access to devices on your home network if needed. That brings us to the site-to-site -site VPN connections. All PepLink and PepWave routers support PepVPN, which is PepLink's simple approach to Internet Protocol Security VPN, or IPsec VPN for short. Most hardware also supports IPsec. This does not include Wi-Fi access points, the Surf Soho MK3, or outdoor-rated hardware. Just like with client-to-site VPNs, site-to-site -site VPN connections will require a static or public internet IP address on at least one of the routers. Here's a preview of each site-to-site -site VPN. IPsec is up first. Site-to-site -site connections are typically made for sharing access to devices and files across each network. IPsec is a common VPN protocol used by several router manufacturers. On your PepLink or PepWave router, IPsec can be used to connect to another PepLink or PepWave router, as well as Cisco and Juniper routers. Though when you're using all PepLink and PepWave hardware, PepVPN is a comparable method that will save you time. As you'll see here, PepVPN works in the same manner as IPsec, meaning they both provide a way of connecting two remote networks together. Here's a view of the PepVPN configuration profile. The difference in settings is quite obvious, you still have enough for what's needed, but in most cases, this is all we'll have to enter, name, encryption, authentication, and remote IP address or hostname on one router. The rest are default settings. Before moving on, there's one more thing we want to clarify. As common as hacking is these days, there's several VPN services you can pay for that advertise they'll protect your internet traffic. Along with features like content blocking, the VPN service masks your IP address with a random one from their servers providing you the secure connection. Services like these usually consist of a program you can download onto your computer, mobile device, and in some cases, your router. Until PepLink released firmware 8.1.1, this was not supported. Now, users have the option to purchase an OpenVPN WAN license, but it will still require the use of a third party for the OpenVPN access. Today, we'll be taking a look over the included OpenVPN client on PepLink and PepWave routers. Like any configuration process, start by logging into the router's admin interface. 
For PepLink Balance users, navigate to the Network tab. For PepWave Max users, navigate to the Advanced tab. Refer to Remote User Access on the left. This feature will be disabled by default. Once enabled, select Open VPN as the VPN type. Set a connection security refresh time or leave the default of 60 minutes. Next is the Listen On section. This is a list of the router's WAN connections along with their IP addresses to the right. The selection you make here is going to be the connection used to allow remote connections. In other words, the router is listening for incoming requests to this interface IP address. All connections and IP addresses will be checked by default. In our example, we only have one connection with a public IP address, the cellular. So this is the only one we'll leave checked. UDP 1194 is the port's defaults, you can change this if there's any conflicts within your network. Connect to network is where you can choose which local area network for incoming users to connect onto. This works just like devices that connect to your network via Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Lastly, you'll need to create a user account. These are credentials that each user will need when connecting from their VPN client device. Enter the name, then password, and click the plus button. If we need to delete a user, click the red X when you're done, click save and then apply changes. The setup of the router is now complete, but you still need to make sure you have an open VPN account created. Typically, you'll use the Connect application they offer for Windows and Mac operating systems. 